Welcome to the Boxy Tea Tutorial. I'm Vivian Wise, and we're going to celebrate Earth Day by learning how to make a boxy tea in the slow fashion movement. First, let's talk about the slow fashion movement. Slow fashion is an awareness and approach to fashion which considers the processes and resources required to make clothing, particularly focusing on sustainability. Slow fashion includes sustainable, ethical garments that are made with long-term design, style, and quality of material in mind. Slow fashion clothes don't follow fashion trends and are made of natural, durable materials that will last. Slow fashion encourages us to buy less garments at higher quality, made from more sustainable processes, less often. It also puts emphasis on the art of clothes making and celebrates the skills of the craftspeople who make them. There are two main terms that we're going to think about related to slow fashion. The first is sustainable fashion, which considers the environmental impacts of the fashion industry. This refers to the effects of the production of clothing on the environment. It includes the use of pesticides and growing cotton and other natural fabrics, the dyes used for various colors, water and waste treatment, energy reduction, using recycled materials, and sometimes even packaging. Ethical fashion considers the social impacts of the fashion industry. This refers to worker treatment and assesses how every process in the supply chain impacts garment workers. Ethical fashion also considers hazardous waste and animal cruelty. How do I fit into the slow fashion movement? It can be hard and overwhelming to figure out how to get both sustainable and ethical garments, but the key is to do what is accessible to you. There are two questions that I like to consider, which is, what is the best way you can make your clothes last longer? And what is the best way you can limit new materials that are not sustainable or ethical from being created? So maybe you have the money to spend on well-made, ethically and sustainably sourced clothes. Or maybe you have time to make your own clothes. Or maybe you have time to mend your own clothes. To make this boxy tea, we're going to look at how we can source materials in a sustainable and ethical way. So where to buy fabric in Chicago? First place that you can look is thrift stores. Old sheets are a great resource that you can find in thrift stores. Just make sure you check the fiber content on the tag. There's also the Waste Shed, which is uh, an artist supply store that's sort of the thrift store of art world. And then there are fabric stores that sell dead stock. Dead stock is from a fashion, the fashion world. So if you have a roll of fabric for something that you're making and you finish making that, then you would give that roll of fabric away. So it's sort of the thrift store of the fashion world. And then if you're buying new fabric online or in a store, you can look for the certifications that show that it has been sustainably made. If you know of any other places, I would love to hear about them. Please leave a comment. Okay, now we're going to start by preparing our materials. So this is everything you're going to need to make the pattern, take your measurements, and then sew the shirt. So the first thing you'll need is a measuring tape. So this is something soft that you can use to measure your body. And then you'll need a piece of paper approximately 30 inches by 30 inches. So old wrapping paper, a brown paper bag, or newsprint taped together all work really well. You're going to want a pen or a pencil, approximately two yards of fabric. Um, in this case I'm using a two-way stretch like a knit jersey so I have an old sheet from the thrift store that I'll be using. Scissors, I have two pairs of scissors, one for cutting fabric and one for cutting paper. My pins for sewing, um, I will be using a sewing machine. You can also do it by hand. I have thread for the sewing machine. And then optional things, you could use a serger instead of a sewing machine. Works really well for knits. Um, I will be using a clear grid ruler to draw my pattern and then a twin needle on the sewing machine to do my finishing. So we'll start with taking our measurements. So the first thing you want to do is to measure your bust. So with your arms relaxed and at your side, measure around the fullest part of your chest. Make sure to keep the measuring tape horizontal. Get a full measurement without tightening the measuring tape around you. So next we'll take the total length of the shirt from the tip of your shoulder to wherever you want the shirt to end. That would be totally up to you. And then the third one is your neck radius. You want to measure straight across your neck. And that's to determine the width of your neck opening on the shirt. 
And then the last measurement you need is your neck to the center of your bust. So from wherever you want the center of your neck opening to the center of your bust line. Now we'll move over to a table so we can draw out our pattern pieces. Okay, so um, we're gonna label these points as we go. I have my paper ready, I have my ruler, I have my marker, and I have my measurements written down right here, ready for reference. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a vertical line along the right edge of my paper. So I'm gonna go like relatively close to the edge. It doesn't have to be right on the edge. This vertical line to be is gonna be AB, which is the total length of the shirt plus one inch for the hem. Um, so that was the measurement that you took from your shoulder down to the bottom. So I'm gonna mark A at the top and then B at the bottom. And then I'm gonna mark C, which is one inch down from A. And then D, basically two to three inches down from A. So another one or two inches from C. D to N is gonna be your neck to center bust measurement. Um, so mine is seven and a half. So I'm gonna measure um, seven and a half inches from D down, still on this vertical line, and then that will be my N. And now we're gonna move off of the vertical line to mark M from N. Um, I'm gonna measure 20 inches across. So what you're gonna do is take your bust measurement, quarter it, and then add one and a half inches of ease is what it's called. So ease is like, if you think about, you know, when you're standing still, that's a certain measurement, but if you lift your arms up or move them around, I love to wave my arms in the air. <laughs> Um, your measurements change slightly and you need that space to move. So I have N on this side and M on this side. And then I'm gonna do the exact same measurement across the top. So again, perfectly perpendicular to that first horizontal line from A, I'm gonna measure the same amount across and mark it J. So once we have A to J done, we will mark E. So E is gonna be the half of your neck radius. So that's gonna be where your necklines start. Now we're gonna do um, J to L, which is gonna be your sleeve length. Also perpendicular down from L, um, you're gonna do one inch. That is to mark your shoulder slope. You can go ahead and connect E to F. That's just taking your ruler finding the two points and then drawing that diagonal line straight across. So that's gonna be your shoulder seam. And then we can go back down to the bottom and do B to K. You already have B, you're gonna mark K, which is a quarter of your hip or hemline shirt circumference. So like I said, mine is the same as M to N, but you might wanna do your slightly differently. Basically you wanna draw a line from K to M just connecting them. If they're the same measurement, it will be a perfectly straight line. If they're a different measurement, it will be an angled line. And then from M to F, which depending on what your measurements are, it could be a straight line. Mine angles out just slightly. And then we're gonna draw the neckline curves. First, I'm gonna connect C to E. Like so. And then I'll connect D to E. Yay, we made a pattern. You can go ahead and start cutting out your pattern pieces too. You'll cut out everything but the bottom neckline. So you can cut the, the back neckline, but not the lower one. 